Hello everybody, my name is Johns Hopkins and I'm with a nonprofit organization here in Baltimore called Baltimore Heritage. We help neighbors across the city improve their historic uh, communities. And as you are considering the next chapter of your life, whether to move to Baltimore to come to Hopkins, if you're willing to hang in there with me on this windy day for maybe about 10 minutes or so, I'd like to share a little bit of my hometown and a few of our neighborhoods that you might call home, at least for a little while. I have to start with my name, yes, I have the same name as the institution that you might be joining. And yes, both of us have an S on the end of the last name, but I'm not affiliated with the hospital or the medical school, other than hopefully helping out with these videos. If you're curious, the founder's grandparents were also my great grandparents through a different son to the eighth power. If you're a genealogist and there's a term for that, I am all ears, but that's about it. So let's, let's jump in. If you have not been to Baltimore before and you're a literary fan, especially horror stories, you might know us for Edgar Allan Poe. He spent some time here. He's buried here. He is the grandfather of the horror story. And in fact, I think our football team, the Ravens, are the only professional team uh, to be named from a literary reference. So pretty neat there. If you're not a uh, horror story fan, but you're a foodie, you might know us for crab cakes. We are a humble people here in Baltimore. We don't brag about a lot, but we do have the best crab cake in the known universe. In fact, a few years ago, uh, some NASA astronauts began begging one of our local crab cake purveyors, Fadley Seafood, been around for about 150 years, to try to figure out a recipe that you could get a crab cake up in space. I think they're still working on that. But if you're not a foodie, maybe you're a TV fan and you know us uh, through the TV show, The Wire, that great, great show that was filmed here where everybody is corrupt. The cops are corrupt, the criminals are corrupt, the politicians are corrupt. Uh, some of that is true, maybe a little more than we'd like to think, uh, but that's all part of Baltimore as well. Um, or maybe you know us through one of our nicknames. Uh, we, on our, our bus uh, stop benches, we have a slogan, the city that reads. Uh, that comes from our public library system, the Pratt Library, founded in 1880. I think the first big city library system to be free to everybody, regardless of race or religion uh, or sex. So pretty neat there. A joke that went around a few years ago when the city was trying to cut the library funding was that we have to change those park benches to read uh, the city that reads a little less. I don't think we had to do that, um, but there it is. Um, or our other moniker, uh, the uh, Charm City, uh, a, a moniker that our tourist bureau loves to use. The funny thing about that, and, and yes, we are a, a genial lot generally, but the funny thing is it came about not from how nice we are, but from little charm bracelets that we gave out when the Inner Harbor was opening in the 1980s. Uh, but the meaning changed and it stuck, so what the heck. Um, but you're probably most interested not about our monikers, but about our neighborhoods. And we are a city of neighborhoods. We have about 250 different neighborhoods. In fact, if you're sitting at a coffee shop or a bar or on a, a bus stop bench with the city that reads written on the back, and you strike up a conversation with the person next to you, the first question they're likely to ask is what neighborhood are you from? Um, our neighborhoods are full of color and different twists and turns. They have wonderful names like Ridgely's Delight or one of my favorites, Better Waverly, which started out and broke away from a, its neighboring neighborhood, Waverly. Can you sense a little animosity there in choosing a new name? Um, to give you a sense, the city of San Francisco has about 120 neighborhoods, uh, the city of Philadelphia about 150, um, and the city of Chicago, with six times our population, has the same number of neighborhoods, 250, so those matter a lot, especially here in Baltimore. Um, and we're going to jump in uh, and take a look at three of those. Now, Hopkins is a great place, and it's got a great diversity of people from all over the country, all over, all over the world, and they live all over Baltimore. So I can't predict exactly where you're going to live, but we're going to take three neighborhoods where there are a lot of Hopkins folks living, and, and maybe you'd end up in one of them. But before we leave here, just a word about where I am. I'm in a public park right in downtown called Federal Hill. It got its name from a boat, the Federalist 
journalist that helped win the Revolutionary War back in 1776. We had a big party here in the uh, 1889 to celebrate, or 1789, excuse me, to celebrate the uh, ratification of the U.S. Constitution. Over the years, Frederick Douglass has walked these paths before he escaped to his freedom. Um, and more recently, the civil rights crusader uh, representative Elijah Cummings uh, also walked these paths. Today, it's a park. There are children uh, behind me on swing sets that are uh, playing happily, but I also hope learning a little bit of history along the way. So let's, uh, let's end here and go on over to our first neighborhood called Locust Point. All right, if you're still with me, we've hopped over to the first neighborhood we want to talk about, Locust Point. It's still windy, but we're still here. Um, I wanted to start with Locust Point because it's where a lot of people got their start in America. In the years between the end of the Civil War and World War I, Locust Point was the second biggest point of entry next to Ellis Island for folks coming to America, especially from Europe. Today, there are no longer quarantine huts and document checkpoints. Um, it's a residential neighborhood. A lot of Hopkins folks live here. One of its other, one of its anchors is a former Procter and Gamble soap making factory called Tide Point. It's now the home, uh, the headquarters of the apparel company uh, Under Armour. Uh, tide Point, by the way, is kind of a double entendre. Uh, tide because of the tides of the bay. It is right on the water, uh, but also that's where Tide soap used to be made. Um, I said we were good at reusing building. That that old soap factory is a uh, is an example. If if you came here, you might also live in a neighborhood called Woodbury that's centered around an old ironworks facility. And if you're young and hip, or, or maybe just hip, not even young, you might end up living in uh, one of many uh, former sailcloth factories that's been converted into apartments. Another anchor here in the Locust Point neighborhood is Fort McHenry. That's the birthplace of the uh, Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem back in the War of 1812. That's another story, but that's where it got its start. But for many people, the uh, sort of hub of the neighborhood is a bar and restaurant called Locust Point Steamers or LP Steamers that's got wonderful seafood and a fabulous crab deck where you sit outside and pick steam crabs and if you have never eaten steam crabs and come to Baltimore you will sooner or later eat steam crabs and I bet love them. If you lived here, you probably would live in a row house. We are a city of row houses. They're houses that share walls with other houses. Here, the uh, row houses are about 1,500 square feet. A lot of them are occupied by single families. A number of them have been converted into rentals, one bedroom, two bedroom, sometimes three bedroom. Um, or you could end up living in the apartment building behind me. It is a 100-year-old grain silo that's been converted into modern apartments. It's called Silo Point. All right, we're going to end there and hop over to our second neighborhood, uh, back over to Federal Hill. All right, we have jumped back over to Federal Hill, but I'm not in Federal Hill Park this time. I'm on a street called William Street in the heart of the neighborhood. And if you look behind me and you think, hmm, those houses look pretty old, you'd be right. We're in one of Baltimore's oldest neighborhoods. Some of the houses here date to right around 1800, the early 1800s. And if you lived here, you'd likely uh, be living in a house like the one behind me, hopefully converted into an apartment with a new kitchen um, on a street about like this. If you do move here, uh, please Please do not call these townhouses. Rich Londoners built townhouses in the early 17th century, and we in America adopted them some more or less successfully in new developments. And please don't call them brownstones. Brownstone is a fine building material. It's a, a stone like slate. We have a few houses built out of brownstone. New York has a lot more. Um, these are decidedly row houses of red Baltimore brick. Row houses are wonderful in that they're like a haiku. They have a strict form, but the creativity is endless. You have no idea what you're gonna get until you walk inside. Some of them are like they were built 100, 150 years ago. Some of them have been wildly modernized, maybe even taking out all of the walls on the first floor to create what realtors call an entertaining space. I'm not sure that's a great idea, but that's what they do. Um, so you never know. If you lived here, you would have some 
some uh, distinct advantages of being part of a row house community. And row houses are like alchemy also, only they don't turn base metals into gold, they turn individuals into neighbors. And here's how it works. If you come home from going grocery shopping, you walk up your front steps and your neighbor is sitting on her front steps right next to you and says hello. She's sitting there drinking a glass of wine or a cup of coffee. And unless you're a total grump, you say hello back and there's the beginning of a relationship, hopefully a friendship. Then she introduces you to her neighbor on the other side and so it goes. Now I will admit there are times when you're uh, tired, you've had a long day and you really do not want to hear why your neighbor's sister's cousin is not coming over for the holidays. Um, but on the whole, the advantages of being part of a community far outweigh the inconveniences. And I don't know of anybody who has lived in Baltimore for any length of time who doesn't value the community and the neighborhood they've been part of. Here in this neighborhood, one of your great advantages is all the plethora of restaurants and shops that you can walk to. You could have lunch at a Lebanese restaurant and dinner at a sushi restaurant. You could, if it's a rainy Thursday night and you don't feel like cooking, uh, loads of Southern comfort food places uh, for you to walk to. And of course, the ubiquitous poke bowl places that seem to have popped up everywhere. If you're here, I will bet a good many week, number of weeks, you'll find yourself at Cross Street Market. Ball Baltimore is unique in American cities in that the city owns about a half a dozen public markets, including Cross Street Market, um, in neighborhoods across the city. There are markets where you can get fresh fr fruit and produce, uh, as well as prepared foods. If you go to Cross Street Market, you might go to one of the old timers like Fenwick's Meats, or one of the new timers like DMV Empanadas. And of course, you would go to the Ale House once or twice with the micro brews. And I want to end by saying that uh, uh, despite popular myth, at least here in Baltimore, the Federal Hill neighborhood does not have a neighborhood bar on every corner, but it's close. All right, let's jump over to our final neighborhood in Canton. All right, we have hopped over the harbor. We're now in our final neighborhood called Canton. We're on the north side of the harbor, pretty near Hopkins Hospital and Medical School. There are loads of Hopkins folks all around here. The hub of the neighborhood is really a former can company, a 100-year-old cannery that's been converted into shops and restaurants and a grocery store. Um, as a uh, kind of funny aside, it sat vacant for many years. This neighborhood is one of many in Baltimore that's having a rebirth. The cannery sat vacant for many years years and a friend of mine who was part of the redevelopment team when they started out they went inside and found loads of baseballs they couldn't figure out what was going on until one of the local kids fessed up while the building was vacant uh, they had played a game where you got points for whacking a baseball and breaking a window um, so loads and loads of windows loads and loads of baseballs in there um, but Baltimore was a hub of canning in its uh, early days in the winter we canned oysters and seafood from the Chesapeake Bay in the summer we canned produce from the eastern shore um, and now that cannery has got uh, uh, lots of different things going on to it. Um, I am here in a place called O'Donnell Square which is uh, really kind of the geographic center of the neighborhood. It's named for Captain John O'Donnell who was one of two sea captains who first sailed over and traded with China when we were a brand new country called the United States of America. Um, he came back with loads of stuff including uh, new sailors from China who we believe are the first Chinese people to set foot in America here in Canton uh, in Baltimore. We don't know what happened to the Chinese sailors. We do know what happened to lots of the silk and tea that he brought back. Our brand new president George Washington bought up loads and loads of those. Um, he bought up so much that uh, O'Donnell threw in a free hookah pipe for the new president. We don't know what the president did with the hookah pipe either, uh, but there it is. Um, uh, O'Donnell, though, was not a hero. He enslaved people. He was part of Baltimore's uh, white upper class before the Civil War uh, that held enslaved people. We here in Baltimore are still dealing with the legacy of slavery and the uh, legacies of racism uh, that followed it here today. If you move to Baltimore and you want to uh, find out more about it, or, or better yet, you want to get involved, um, give me a call and I'll, I'd be glad to help. Um, but we're going to talk about uh, O'Donnell uh, Square in Canton as a neighborhood. If you lived here, you might well live in a row house like ones in Federal Hill and Locust Point. But you also might live in a hundred year old brewery that's been converted into apartments and shops and restaurants. Uh, the former Natty Bow Brewery, National Bohemian. Um, it's still brewed. You can still go get it. If you do, do not have high expectations. It's not good, but it is our local beer. 
um, uh, but you could live there as well in a brand new apartment or you could live in a 100 year old row house uh, here surrounding O'Donnell Square where uh, you can walk and you can get steamed shrimp or street tacos or again the ubiquitous poke bowls that are uh, everywhere. I'm going to wrap up and say thanks for hanging in there with me, if you indeed have hung in there with me. I hope that this has been helpful in learning a little bit about at least three of uh, Baltimore's neighborhoods. Um, we have great architecture in Baltimore. We have got great neighborhoods in Baltimore. But what we really have is great people in Baltimore. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? So uh, as you consider what to do next, where you're going to move in your next chapter, um, come on over, uh, maybe sit down on a, a bus stop bench with a city that reads a printed on the back and uh, ask whoever's sitting next to you, what neighborhood are you from? What do you think about it? And you'll get a true sense of what Baltimore is all about. Thanks so much, and we hope to see you uh, here in the city that we call home.